So welcome. Um, we finally have the Communication Skills 2020 syllabus and by online delivery. Um, and over the next 45 minutes or so, I'd like to be able to share with you some of the key elements of the syllabus as well as um, some information and help with regards to filling in forms. And then of course, I'd like to be able to take some questions to help clarify various things pertaining to need for communication. Um, so these still, things still remain the hallmark of all that we do. So the entire offering through the digital grades, be this through drama or be this through communication skills, is to be responsive to a changing world in which we see a lot of things happening digitally. Um, it's also so that a lot of learning and assessing which is currently happening in a digital space is paving the way for newer audiences, um, perhaps beyond just the stronghold of the major cities to be able to reach very many people across the world. Um, and while of course we make all these changes, I think it's important to point out that over the last 140 years, if we've grown from strength to strength in our ability to assess, in our ability to ascertain the learning outcomes and the assessment criteria, as well as the attainment descriptors. And this whole medium of the digital ecosystem is just a change to the medium. It does not change in any way the rigor that we've built in over the last 140 odd years. Um, needless to say, all our qualifications carry the same rigor and are equally valid. They carry the UCAS points, they carry the uh, mandated uh, total qualification time, uh, which is a combination, of course, of guided learning hours and independent learning hours. And most importantly, um, which is something that we've always stood for, is that this is a very personal expression of an area of interest of yours. So it's your performance and your choice. And going forward, you, we will have the option to do both the face-to-face -face experience as well as the digital experience. So this, in a nutshell, would kind of sum up the entire messaging and our view of digital assessments in the drama suite, which at this point in time also includes communication skills. Now, keeping this in mind, how does this all fit in? So the communication skills by what we call the video conference or the online delivery system follows the same principle as all our digital grades for in the drama suite, be it whether it's speech and drama or acting or uh, musical theater or performance arts. And they're essentially designed to support learning and teaching in a changing world where we see a greater influence of the digital ecosystem. But they also sit alongside our face-to-face -face assessments, which gives you an additional um, element of choice and flexibility. Now, the important things, and at the cost of repeating myself, for us to remember is that all our assessments, be it digital or be it face-to-face, -face, have the same academic rigor. They have the full recognition and the say you get this very same certificate with the very same amount of UCAS points being awarded, um, irrespective of the medium. This last paragraph perhaps paraphrases our view of the world going forward and why these skills become so important for young learners and even adult learners um, is because it, it's not just about the tasks that are there in the syllabus, but it's about the skills that get inherently developed through preparation for the tasks. So it's meant to affect both the academic and educational workplace uh, sorry, the educational uh, space as well as the workplace. Um, it includes nuances of communication that include conversation, discussion, presentation, persuasion, negotiation. And it also helps us build abilities in learners to um, blend the use of equipment and materials to aid their communication, not to replace their communication. All right. Um, and of course, it also builds out additional abilities for research and reflection and critical thinking and problem solving. Now, so what has changed? Well, essentially, it's just the delivery that has changed. So in this particular scenario, we have 
a candidate coming to a center. Okay, let me just repeat this carefully. The candidate still comes to a center um, while the examiner is at home uh, assessing this, um, the candidate's performance. Now, in lieu of this, there are certain adaptations that need to be made for the way we engage with material or with presentations. And because of that, we've also had to include some of the supporting tasks and adapt them. And of course, now you will get digital report forms. And in lieu of this entire um, workaround in the modalities, there is a little bit of a change to the timetabling, which I must also add does not affect candidates or teachers. It is just an internal rework for um, what is happening. And I will talk about that in um, a minute or two. Um, so let's just look, look a little bit at how does this happen? So the candidate at the center and the examiner at home, um, essentially we're using a video conferencing software. In this particular case, it is Zoom, okay? Now, again, this is not for you to worry about, but this is something that we are working with as our um, base infrastructure. So there will be a desktop or a laptop with speakers, microphone, and a web camera. Um, we are working with these kind of speeds, a 10 Mbps download and a 5 Mbps for uploads. So this is the minimum guidance that we are working with. Um, the Zoom video conferencing app, I'm going to talk about this a little later, um, but this requires it to be downloaded both at the center's end as well as at your end. And I will tell you why in a few minutes. Um, and of course, we must keep in mind that there is enough room because this is a communication skills assessment. Some tasks involve a candidate to sit, some involve them to stand. So there will be, or there must be sufficient space for where this happens. And hence, all of these things considered to be able to ensure connectivity, to be able to ensure um, the right technology, to be able to offer a seamless experience and of course, to uh, protect the integrity and the authenticity of this assessment, um, we have to do these assessments through the center. So um, this is a little bit about how it will happen. Um, the changes to the timetabling that I was referring to just a, a minute ago, uh, essentially really do not affect the candidate or your teacher. It's just something that we have to provision back end. Uh, to ensure that there's two minutes of additional time um, between for all uh, candidates doing initial to grade five, and there's four minutes for those doing grade six and above. So what do we do in this in-between time? Well, the examiner is going to be writing their reports. So as you know, this is already, already provisioned for in the time allotted to an assessment. Um, but at the center level, um, and all the chaperones who help make the exams happen through the centers. During this time, when the examiner is typically writing their report, this is the time when we're going to be sanitizing equipment and enabling the candidate switch over for the exam. So a few other guidelines to ensure, again, um, the authentic results is a 10 minute break after every 60 minutes uh, of examination and a session length to um, include, or rather to be restricted to just three and a half hours. And the reasons why we're doing this is firstly, to allow regular screen breaks for examiners, to prevent examiner fatigue, and to ensure a rating consistency. Now, when I wanna just clarify this, because I said a session length reduced to half a day or three and a half hours. That does not mean that we will do only three and a half hours of exams in a day. We will still run the whole gamut from 9.30 in the morning till 5.30 in the evening. The limit to, for an examiner in a day is three and a half hours. So we could probably be having two examiners simultaneously or two examiners consecutively, one after the other. Irrespective, that is what we need to plan based on the number of entries that you tell us you have, so that we ensure that we have the examiners available for you at the right time. Um, but just for you to know that in order for us to maintain the highest standards, both of marking, assessing, um, and ensuring 
that um, examiners are on the top of their game, just like our students are, we've limited their exam exposure hours to three and a half hours. All right. So that's a little, that's the change to the timetabling. Now, what has not changed? It's still the same exam. So we are still assessed by Trinity's drama panel of examiners. Um, a lot of ch new developments happening over here. Um, we've got some new examiners coming in from all across the world. Um, the session remains the same. We still engage with a live examiner, all right? So this is not like speech and drama where you record and upload. You're still going to be interacting, um, transacting, negotiating, persuading, presenting to a live examiner. Everything else, same qualification, same certificate, same regulation, all still applies. Now, let's look a little bit about what syllabi are covered over here. So a lot of these questions came up in the interim when we were talking about planning for the future. Uh, by the way, I can see some questions coming in. I will try and take them all at the end um, so that we can keep some flow to this entire morning. Um, and of course, I will also look at the chat a little later, but I do know that my colleague Somian um, and even Anthony are there to assist with any immediate um, uh, queries that come in um, also. Um, so coming back to the syllabi that are covered over here, um, because this is a transitioning um, phase um, and to avoid any sort of disruption, our first round of communication skills exams are going to include both the 2010 syllabus as well as the 2020 syllabus. So this way, teachers who've been preparing with either syllabi or both, you're completely covered. So this way we've ensured that there's no disruption to what you've been preparing your candidates with and in. And it's the same thing that we did with the speech and drama and all the other uh, drama suite assessments to include the older versions of the syllabi. But the 2010 version, which is currently in the online syllabus, will seize on the 31st of May, 2021. All right. Now, this has a couple of important bearings, which means that if, for instance, you are attempting the professional certificate in communication skills, which is part of the 2010 syllabus, then you need to be able to complete this in this round itself, all right? So we still, of course, do not have performance certificates and we have no pair and group assessments as of now. Um, moving on from here, let's look at now how some of the material is being adapted to in the context of the medium being digital and online. So let's take an example of grade six. And by the way, these examples are not, it's not, I'm going to cover literally every example. Um, grade six, um, and this is common to both, whether you're using the 2010 syllabus or the 2020 syllabus. Um, there is an interviewing task over there where a candidate appears or applies for a specific position. So as here, you can see the guidance says very clearly that normally candidates would have brought in a paper CV or curriculum vitae to the exam. In this particular case now, they do not do that. Instead, what they will do is just state the role or the job they are applying for, and the examiner will ask relevant questions, all right? So this way, um, it eliminates that entire paper process and that procedure, and I think it honestly becomes a lot better because um, very often, um, rather than be restricted to what you wrote in your CV, this way the examiner gets to have an authentic engagement with the candidate and vice versa. So truly it'll also help candidates prepare better to be aware of everything that concerns that particular position they are applying for above and beyond what they would have traditionally written in a CV. Um, now, here's an important point, uh, which I just want to clarify. It mentions over here, candidates can bring their own laptop to show the PowerPoint presentations. 
And in a note below that, it says um, the candidates should make the presentations available to the center in advance of the exam day. And a little later, I'm going to make reference to this point again. So at this point in time, I want to clarify, please, teachers, and I'm going to say this really slowly. We would like to be in a position where a candidate can use their own laptop for the presentation, particularly if they are making a presentation. Now, the reason for this is obvious. One, firstly, comfort, convenience of your own uh, equipment. Two is um, it would ensure that the candidate is able to bring his A game that being said, there is a requirement right now, and this is where we are seeking clarification, okay? There is a requirement right now that we have all of the presentation materials loaded onto the center's laptop as well. So for the moment, while we are seeking clarification on this, I would like to request that you prepare your candidates to be able to firstly be comfortable with their own machines, okay, that they're using for the presentation. And we will get back and offer some clarity on whether we would need to run this off our machines. Either ways, my recommendation to you is please have your presentations ready to be sent to the centers as and when we need them. So this is just a little bit of a clarification that we ourselves are working through. I'm going to repeat this point again for those of you who may be just joining us. Um, when it comes to any task involving presentation or PowerPoint presentations or using making presentations via a computer, we are trying to ensure that you are allowed to bring your own computer in and be able to use it for the assessment or for the exam. That being said, this is an area that we need to get 100% clarity on from London, and we're in the process of seeking that. Uh, nonetheless, okay, please, from your end, ensure firstly that you're comfortable with your own machine, but also be prepared to send us this presentation for us to be able to load in advance should the need arise. Okay, um, We can talk about this a little later, perhaps, and then the questions come in. So I just wanted to clarify this because this is an area which is slightly gray at the moment until we can give you a little more clarity over here. Going forward from here, let's look at some of the other tasks. Um, in grade six and seven, um, in grade six, you discuss the text of a speech, and in grade seven, you discuss the ambit or the overview of an advertisement script that is provided to you. So typically, this would have been given to you 15 minutes before you enter the examination room. In this particular scenario of the online assessment, these scripts, there are three for each, three speeches for grade six and three advertisement formats for grade seven, which can be found in the support guide, which is available for download and which has already been circulated to you in addition to the syllabus. So this way, candidates can familiarize themselves with all of the texts or all of the advertisement scripts. And the examiner selects one of these to discuss with the candidate in the exam. So again, I think this um, provides for great preparation. Um, what I will also be doing in a mail to follow that will reach you tomorrow morning, I will create a Dropbox link wherein you can download um, whatever documents that I'm making reference to today particularly the syllabus, the supporting guide, a summary sheet of what's changed and what's not, um, and so on. Now, similarly for grade eight and the professional certificate, the grade eight and the professional certificate, if you're using the 2010 version, typically what would have happened is there would be three public address scenarios distributed on paper to candidates 15 minutes prior to their exam. So now instead, what we are doing is in the support guide, the options have already been given to you. But of course, we still want that level of spontaneity. So here in this specific case, in within the task itself, there is a slight adaptation. So while you will have the basis of your topics for your speech, 
um, or your public address scenario, instead of making a lengthy five or six minute speech with a 15 minute heads up, here you will make a two minute speech. The examiner will thereafter listen and will give you a new stimulus and give you two minutes to make an adaptation to your speech. Okay, so there is an example that has already been provided to you in the support guide. Um, but just since I'm talking to you and just to give you that example, uh, if let's say a candidate over here needed to make a speech at a family gathering, um, and let's assume they do make the speech, as an intervention after two minutes, when the speech is over, the examiner would then say, so let's assume because for various reasons, a few members of the family could not join and they joined um, via Zoom or via um, house party or whatever software there is electronically. How would your speech change? So you can see that is the stimulus that the examiner will give you at that moment in time and you have two minutes to react, get your thoughts together, and then change your speech to include and reflect what the examiner has asked you to incorporate by way of a realigned situation. So, of course, I'm, I mean, we can take some more examples at the end if you'd like to ask me a few more, um, but this is where we stand with regards to uh, the public address scenarios. Now, um, if we were to make a comparison between the face-to-face -face assessments and the video conferencing assessments, let's look at the various elements that would get affected. So for instance, um, the use of PowerPoint presentation slides. So in a face-to-face -face exam, the candidate would show the examiner this via screen. But in a case now, because it would be online, the candidate sends the PowerPoint file to the center in advance to upload to the desktop or laptop before the exam so that the candidate can share the screen uh, with the examiner during the presentation task. So like I said, as of now, please assume that you may need to send your presentation into the center. We are seeking additional clarity um, wherein you can use your own laptop, all right, so that there's no formatting last minute glitches and there's no change in layouts and there's no uh, change in um, fonts um, for various reasons. Uh, on a sidebar, I do want to just make a quick recommendation. Teachers, please um, avoid your students making transitions and animations on their slides. They normally never carry any weight, uh, and they certainly are not going to get you more marks. In fact, you will realize, and I'm sure you've already done this, but in an online scenario, sometimes you're ready to speak and the animation is not yet transitioned, um, which leaves you in an awkward silence. So please avoid any sort of animations and transitions, unless, of course, it is the whole point of your assessment. But I don't think there's any grade that really asks you to do that. So please avoid that. Um, it'll just make things a little um, more seamless and simpler for the candidate to um, deal with. Uh, in the case of grade six and seven, I've already spoken about this, the discussion around a text of speech and an advertisement. Typically, what would have happened is 15 minutes prior, you, the examiner would have given you three options. Here, we're giving you all the options uh, by way of the support guide. And thereafter, we are within the context of the live exam, giving you a renewed scenario, um, particularly in the case of um, the speech, to be able to make a few additional inclusions as well. Um, some of the other comparisons to make is the interviewing task. Of course, this is just a reiteration of all that I just covered a little while ago, but it bears repeating, So, and it's important, particularly since these are the higher grades. Um, in the case of the traditional exams, face-to-face -face exams, there was a prepared CV uh, or resume or profile or bio data that was done on paper. Here, we don't use that. Um, instead, the candidate just states their, uh, the position that they are applying for and the examiner takes it from there. Um, the grade eight and the professional certificate, um, again, over here, stimulus was provided three, uh, 15 minutes before, couple of options. Herein, you already have the options with you by way of the support guide. And um, you, know, you can go in 
uh, preparing all of the options with the examiner choosing one of them. All right. So this is with regards that change. Now let's look a little bit at the exams and what would happen over here. Um, specifically, this is the journey of the candidate. So you have the candidate, they prepare their performance tasks as outlined in the syllabus that they're choosing. Remember, up till the 31st of May, you have the benefit of using both syllabi, the 2010 version, as well as the 2020 version. All right. Um, after the 31st of May, you have only one syllabus which will stay in force, which is the 2020 syllabus. Okay. Coming back again, of course, to this process cycle. Um, so the candidate prepares based on whichever uh, syllabus they've chosen. Um, they prepare supporting visual aids, okay, if necessary, um, to support these tasks. So now, question. At the younger grades, very often candidates come in with a few photographs or some sort of a display on a cardboard sheet um, and so on. So please, all of that is still very, very much allowed. Um, but I do want to ask you to just think this through a little bit more is if it's possible, okay, and the candidate is capable and is comfortable using it via a PowerPoint, then obviously from an examiner's point of view, the clarity is a lot better because they can see it digitally. Whereas if the candidate still wishes to stand and uh, explain something by way of a flip chart, then please teachers ensure that that flip chart is not oversized and double the candidate size. Rather, it's something that fits within the purview of a camera screen like this, all right, for both the child to either stand or to be able to even sit, all right? So something that they can hold, which the examiner can see. But please, I'm going to repeat this again. It is your discretion that we rely on really heavily over here. If you believe that there's going to be a compromise in what the examiner will see, then put it onto a PowerPoint, all right? and let that be shared um, with the examiner so they can see it up close and personal. But of course, if the candidate, and again, this all boils down to what the candidate is comfortable with, all right, and how well we use these visual aids, if the candidate is able to stand and demonstrate this and it's visible enough, and you will realize this through your own little screen tests that you will do in, a, in preparation, you will realize that then there's, there's no loss uh, in terms of um, quality or quantity. Um, and hence, then you can please go ahead with what you deem to be right. Okay. Now, um, if you are using visual aids over here again, I mentioned this point, please mail it into the center 72 hours prior. But like I said, this is an area where we still want to get a little more clarity and we'll share with you whatever information we get on this. Like I said, we are working towards you being able to use your own uh, equipment um, so that there's a seamless um, use and process in the exam. But of course, if there is a requirement from Trinity side, and that's where we're seeking clarity, to have the presentations with us, then you will need to please keep that ready. Please excuse me for a moment while I get a quick sip of water. And of course, so coming back then um, from the higher grades onwards, grades six, seven, and eight, um, in addition to whatever preparatory tasks you have, you will definitely need to engage with the support guide. That this is what it looks like for the completion of your latter tasks. So we, that's what we've been discussing. And then of course, finally, you appear for the assessment. Okay. So... This is the kind of support that is available on the website right now. You have the syllabus specifications. This is the link mentioned over here. Okay. I will make this link shared with you as well. Um, you've got the syllabus spe specifications. You have the support guide and you have a summary sheet of what is same and adapted. And of course, what will be coming out very shortly is an explainer video. And um, this will come out on the website. So you can follow that as well. 
Now, let's look a little bit at some of the procedural work involved, um, which is how do you comply with the entry process? So this is definitely a screenshot that you want to grab because bookings or your entry processes start from today. Okay, um, All centers, all your support customer support centers that you normally transact with, please go back to them, okay? They should have already sent you communication to this effect, but if you have any queries with regards, is my center doing assessments um, and so on and so forth, please talk to your local customer support teams. However, what I'm sharing with you on the screen holds good. Um, we start taking bookings from today. The last date, for this session is Saturday, the 20th of February, 2021, which means that by that day, you need to submit all your entries um, to your local customer support office. We start uh, this round of exams in March, 2021. Okay. Now the exam fee, a little bit about that. It remains the same. Okay because we still have a visiting examiner, um, or rather we still engage with an examiner live. The exam still remains the same. The qualification remains the same. The face-to-face -face interaction with the examiner is live. And the last part might not concern you, which is no minimum fee, but this would typically have applied to scenarios in which as a school or as a center, you needed to send in a certain number of group entries or a certain number of, uh, number of candidates. That does not apply anymore. Okay, so please, this is the, um, one of the very important slides that you want to capture. Okay, now moving forward in terms of fees, there is a published fee list, which is available from 1st February 2021 to 31st of March 2022. In fact, I can go one further to say that there's been no increase in the fee between the last or the current year and the next year. And when I say next year, I'm talking referring to the financial years uh, or the academic years. So the fees remain the same. It is the same as an in-person exam because we are still going to engage with an examiner live. Okay. Um, this is an important point of clarification. Candidates who paid the fees before the pandemic, okay, have until the 31st of December this year to appear for their online exam. Okay, so in case you were shortchanged or caught off guard um, by the pandemic's arrival and were not able to complete your exams, we know there are a few cases, please ensure that you complete your exam by the 31st of December, 2021, okay? For all newer candidates, you follow the regular procedure that we would typically follow, all right? This is typically a time in the year when a lot of the cities in the country are doing their communication skills exams. So that does not change. You can still very much go ahead and register. In terms of what are the fees, this is just for your benefit. As you can see, you should have already received this communication. Um, this is the fee uh, for individual exams. We are only running individual exams right now. So these are the pr this is the pricing. Um, and of course, like I said, you should have already received it. In case you haven't, please reach out to your local customer support office and they will help you. Um, as far as depositing the fees, Again, you have three options. One is to do it the traditional way, which is to deposit the fees in an HDFC bank using a specific HDFC fee slip. Now, I know this is something that you are already used to, but the other option that you have, which is option two, is to do an NEFT transfer to our HDFC bank, okay? Again, these details, your local Trinity customer support office will provide you because needless to say, the account numbers would change from city to city. So please take that information. Again, it should have already been provided to you from your local customer support office. You do also have the option in case 
your local center, Trinity Customer Support Center, accepts credit card that you can go across over there and uh, and complete a payment via credit card or debit card. Um, as regards submitting your entry, now this is a little important, please. So, um, uh, and there are a couple of things over here that I really want to point out. So one is, of course, um, when you're submitting your entry, you must submit proof of your payment. And most importantly, when you send us an image of a check or whatever, that does not really help us. What does help us is the bank reference number, all right, for an online transfer, okay? If, of course, then this is, again, something that you would do with your local Trinity support office, all right? But please, if you're making an online transaction, okay, then we don't need an image. What we really need is the bank reference number. Uh, filling in a form. So there is a new updated form, and that's why I've put part of this in red, is fill in the entry form. It's an Excel sheet, which you will receive through your customer support office, which is titled TCL Enrollment File Version February 2021. Okay, so this has both, um, it's the most updated form, which has uh, various codes for the communication skills syllabus. Please do not use any earlier version. All right. Again, in case you haven't received this Excel format, please call your local office and they will help you. Okay. Now, in the same email, you should also please, it's a cover B mail that when you send the Excel sheet to us, please also tell us which dates your candidates are not available. Okay. Now, as you know, we always bend over backwards to try and accommodate all requests. But please keep in mind that sometimes, as hard as we may try, all right, it's not practically or physically possible to accommodate every request. So please, we're going to beg your indulgence on this one. Help us help you. Give us your dates in advance. We will try our very best to ensure that we can comply with that schedule. All right. But if at all, for some reason, we can't, then please understand it's not because we don't want to, it's because we also don't have an option, okay? Uh, finally, of course, please make sure all your information is correct and filled in correctly for the simple reason when it does come to us and once we've uploaded it onto the system, we cannot make a change, all right? So please check and double check name, surname, date of birth, all of those things which I'm going to talk about in a second, all right, to ensure that we've got the correct data. Um, other elements to keep in mind on the form filling, first name and last name, vitally important. Middle name is optional. Now, in certain cultures, perhaps you may want to leave the last name or there is no last name, in which case, please put a dot, all right, or a full stop into that relevant cell under the last name section, okay? The date of birth should be mentioned in the format that is provided to you, which is DDMMYY. Okay. So you put your date of birth as the 25th of November, 2004, as an example, by using a forward slash or a front slash as the separator, okay? Please don't put a dash in Excel. You know, when you put a dash, any number of things can happen. So please use forward separators. Um, please enter the ethnicity, gender, exam suite, examination product from the drop-down lists. Now, this is important, and I want to just talk about this here. In the examination suite, you should choose communication skills online. Okay? And I'm going to share that screen, a screenshot with you just now. Um, in, for your examination product name, please choose communication skills, individuals, whatever your grade is, and online. Okay. Now, just at the side of that, there is a column which says leave blank. In this column, please mention the version of the syllabus that you're using. Well, so let me just repeat this. If you are sending up a candidate for obviously an online assessment, okay, you have chosen to use the 2010 syllabus, then when you are filling in your form, 
this is what the form would look like. You fill in your first name, you fill in your last name, the date of birth with forward slashes, the gender, okay, the external ID, and I'll come to this, come back to this, okay. But in the exam suite over here, you will mention communication skills online. Okay, that's this part over here. Okay. When it comes to choosing the examination slash product name, you will use communication skills, individual, whatever the relevant grade is, and online. Okay. And finally, of course, in this particular column over here, which is blank, all right, it says leave blank. Over here, please mention whether you're using the 2010 version or the 2020 version. This way we have, we can give the examiner a heads up, all right, as to what they need to also be prepared with without causing a delay at that moment in the exam, all right? So I hope I'm clear over here. And of course, we'll answer this if there are questions. Now, uh, just the latter part of the form filling, uh, your PAN number, all right, is very, very important and crucial. It is essential. It's not optional. So please, you mention the PAN number of the candidate's parent, if the parents are paying the fees directly to us, or your PAN in case you've collected the fees and you're paying it on behalf of the parents, all right? That PAN number should be entered under the section which says external ID. So that's where you put in the PAN number, okay? Um, under the section applicant, okay, this is where you enter the name of the teacher. Now, the reason why we request this is because you will get a certificate from Trinity stating that you have entered candidates, all right, for these exams. So only if you fill in that form applicant and put in your name as the teacher, you will get that separate certificate or acknowledgement from Trinity that says, yes, you had submitted candidates, all right, um, for this assessment. If you have a school name, okay, both academic school, drama school, communication skills school, all right, please enter the school name and select Y from the drop down list in the adjoining column. If you would like the name of the school to be mentioned on the certificate. Now, very importantly, what you don't need to fill in is the candidate number, the ULN, the ensemble name, which of course would apply typically to a group exam, but that we don't have. The product code, which, norm, which would get generated automatically. Okay, you do not need to fill that in. Um, no need for an email address because there's no links, nothing of that sort that's going to be mailed to the candidate. Uh, you do not need to fill in the minimum age verification, language of exam, consent received, first language venue, all that you don't need to fill in, all right? Uh, lastly, at the cost of repeating it, you should not fill the email address column for the communication skills online delivery exams. Why? because this is a center-driven exam and the candidates would invariably have to come to the center. So there is no link that will go to parents, all right? Um, at best, maybe the schedule of the exams would be communicated to you through your teachers, all right? But uh, there is, uh, we're not sending any links for the exam per se, okay? So that pretty much brings us to the end of this session. All right, I'm going to uh, stop sharing for a moment over here so that we can take some questions.